uma senhora cá. Thank God it's Friday. Let's crack a like it, everybody. We are on September 15th, 1980. Welcome to the nursing home where we have crazy critters all around, old people fighting over soup. And if that's a window into their personality, then I'd hate to see the living room. All right, speaking of personalities. We have hints here from Ro we met Robespierre, right? So City Hall's got one thumb right on us. Is that different than last time? A chain is only as strong as his weakest link. Uh, what are you doing, Game of Thrones there kind of thing? A little philosophy? Lady Sansa, chaos is a ladder. Lady Sansa, I love you more than anything. <laughs> What a horrible, what a stupid death scene. I, I'm going to tell you, I, before we go into that, I'm just going to go to a rant. That most anticlimactic death of a of one of the most pivotal villains in any kind of series. I mean, that would be, you know, it's almost like if you had uh, Voldemort slip, slip on a tree branch there at the last Harry Potter movie when Harry Potter was going to go sacrifice himself. It's like... Ah, bro, I could. Oh, he falls down, breaks his neck. I mean, Peter Baelish, since season one, put everything in motion, kept on playing the long con, and he goes out because, you know, the Scooby gang there, I mean, Brand was, <laughs> I could have got away with it too if it weren't for you pesky kids and your invalid three-eyed raven. Rero, you looked beautiful that day when your throat was slit, Peter Baelish. All right, let's just get on with it. Mm, got my purr, baby, purr, baby. Uh oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's right. That's right. Same as usual. People have a right to love who they want. Information that in your youth you had a fight with a gay man and he even wound up in the hospital. But, oh wow. It was just a fight. I wasn't fighting a gay man, I was fighting a drunken loudmouth who attacked me. He apologized for his behavior. He was like, so sorry. I swear to God. Why did you send the police? You received complaints, but that's my job. If there weren't any police, the people got in a fight and started killing each other, who'd be responsible for that? Yes. I gave the order. Alright. This game is kind of weird in the, in the fact that, you know, you'll have these long, drawn-out scenes, which are great, by the way. The voice acting is wonderful. But then you have those little things where you're like, what the hell just happened? City Hall still doesn't like us? What the hell? What was the little quote? Never looked a gift horse in the mouth. Who was the first person to look a gift horse in the mouth? Now, what exactly was the outcome of that exchange? Ah. Garbage collection. Fees increase 25%. Freeburg hockey team on a strike. Three months, no pay. Uh, time to put him in the dun, 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 penalty box. Dun, 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 dun. His name is John Cena. First icon discovered in foundation of Buddhist temple. Uh-oh. <laughs> Knew those Buddhists were a bunch of Christ lovers. Alright, another scene. What's this, Martin? Think that'll cover breakfast? Wow. Good Lord, Jack. You should not. <laughs> don't worry, Martin. I don't care what kind of business you're up to. Although on second thought, scratch that. I'm very interested in your business. In fact, that's why I'm here. You have a lot of connections? Uh depends on what you need. I want to keep my job. 
I've got another five years in me at least. I want to prove my dismissal is illegal. You know someone who can help? Uh, Jack, are you sure you want to get involved in this, this fight? Martin, let's not, uh... Got yourself a new toy? Oh, you noticed, Martin. You Go like this newfangled on the move. cell phone? It only weighs 50 pounds. Uh, is this Mr. Boyd? Last I checked, who's this? And where did you get my personal number? Um, when you work at the prosecutor's office, it's not too hard to find someone's phone number. The prosecutor's office? Uh-oh. Just a second. What am I going down for? Out. I need to take this. It's his office. But Jack, it's my office. See? He agrees with me. Okay, okay, I understand. I'll go grab an ice cream. As for your little problem, Jack, I think we can work something out. Give me a couple of weeks. Weeks? Jack, what you're asking is... Yeah, okay, I get it. Now get out already. Why the hell would you help me? It must be because he loves Ben and Jerry so much. I'm sorry, what did you say your name was? I am... Um... See, I'm very Lana discerning. Lana Berman. I'm the deputy prosecutor of Freeburg. Well, one of the deputies. Not even the first deputy to tell you the truth. How can I help you, Ms. Berman? Um, I don't know how to say this, Mr. Boyd. You see, Mr. Boyd, I'm in line to be the next prosecutor of Freeburg, and, and apparently that's happening quite soon. Soon? Shia Broom was just re-elected for a new term. But she'll be resigning in February. She's she's suffering from a heart condition, so she's chosen a replacement. To come love hurts. And she chose me. Love burns. No love goes. It's turn. Love hurts. Yeah, people are going. Why the hell do you? I'm 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 sub. Just because you sing. That really is unbelievable, Miss <laughs> Berman. Uh, but what's it got to do with me? Well. I understand how this call would seem strange to you, Mr. Boyd, but Mrs. Broom said she, well, she said that you have a lot going on, but you're the most honest official in the city. I'm the most and honest. If you really want to change the city for the better, and I swear that's what I want. I'm a then I should meet you. Pill popping. Afraid Mrs. Broom was mother-in-law raging. Believe me, Mr. Boyd. Mrs. Broom. Murdering bastard. I. I I'm sorry, Mr. Boyd. I need to run. Do you mind if I? Well. If I call you later? Do I mind? Hmm, let me think. <laughs> no, I don't mind, Miss Berman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Oh, Jesus, man. You get a new toupee and... All of a sudden, you... Yeah. You and your fat gut. You probably masturbate over a jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there's a big sale, Pavlovina? Is there a big sale? No! I don't even want to promote any of you, Jack. Well, I'd like to promote Purdy, but I don't think she can get promoted anymore. Yeah, see? Uh. All right, Kazumo. Zoomy. Start the day! Scrambled egg, scrambled egg. We saw that fire in the brain, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're doing it again, then. Sorry. Bruno Savini turned out to be a member of a gang known as Atala Funeral Home. If you take down the gang, we will. Federici Lathersi. What are you going to do to me, eh? You coming after me? Forget about it. What are you doing, eh? There, gay you. Hey, you gaboon. I don't even know if Gaboon is the right one. But I can't say anything else or YouTube will delete my channel. Even though you can't even find me. This is way too happy music. Let's do the interrogation. Pull out fingernails. We do waterboarding. We'll pluck your testicles right from your anus. We'll push you in the face. And then we'll take your grandmother up a flight of stairs and push her down. Yeah. Kick your puppy, kick your puppy. 
Is this your hamster? He looks good in this sack that I'm throwing out against the tree. All right. Anyways, um, 18. Bruno Savini, subject suffers from phonophobia. Once a phonophobia. Is that uh, phones? Oh, electricity. There's really something. Oh my god. Once hospitalized by, for electrical burns and says he avoids electricity efforts by psychologists to help him deal with his childhood traumas when not successful. Competitive swimmer, doesn't competitions, gave up the sport through an unpleasant experience after he finished swimming lessons one evening. Some girls locked him inside his locker and left him there all night. Since then, he has repeatedly appealed to. Oh, phonophobia must be. No, that's claustrophobia. Dark and closed spaces, regular exposure to violence at home, death of parents, automobile accidents. Savini dedicated himself to his studies, graduated high school with honors, scholarship to a prestigious college where he also counted, where he was counted one of the three best students. He took several side jobs. One of these jobs at the funeral home, he met Dante Gambino. Excuse me, Mr. Gambino, what is a you? What are you talking about? A you? The two youths. Two youths. They have since grown close. Mr. Gambini, Gambino has assisted Savini in the past. Okay. He's gotten into minor jams. He's his first contact. If you want a gray hair, you do something special to take care of. Listen, I already got a girlfriend. You're probably my type. Are we done here? What do you work for? My own boss, pig. Dan take it. Okay, cool. So we got that. Start to investigate. Glasgow, you're on the case. Beasley, Armstrong, Belcher, and Wamsey. So we're we'll proceed with that. Our my salary is reduced by fifty. Oh bastards. Theft. Detectives on the theft. that. Oh, investigations. Gangs. We did that. Sands. George Sand. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, we need an officer. Wait, what? That's all I get? Son of a bitch. Lavina, six. No, oh, we need another detective now. My detective's fine. Soap. Paul. Oh, we'll put those three guys on the sand case. Now oh, we're starting the investigation there, so we'll do start to investigate this. mistake again. Paid my snitch. Investigations. Wait a minute. Oh, who's this? 
Noise from a garbage truck woke up a big bottom sleep on a nearby bench. Angry went to school. The truck, a fight soon erupted. Uh, Morris. Take Foxman. Pablo Vina. Uh, cases. There we go. Uh, detectives. Yeah, so we only got that. Detectives. Okay. Something like that. Uh, okay, drug possession. Keeps drugs at the funeral home. Okay. Gambino, old reliable employee at Atala Funeral Home, is charged with important distribute drugs. Drugs, the cocaine stored in a metal metal urn, you normally use for ashes. Oh my God! Can I take Grandma home? Oh my God, Grandma, I love you. All right, funeral home. The uh, office is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Closing time. Vehicle filled with urns comes twice a month. Da 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 da. da. The monsters. Okay. Drug filled urns stored in a fireproof cabinet in the office of Federica Letezera, the owner of the whole operation. Dante Gambino keeps a key to her office, which he wears on a chain with a lot of other keys. All right, whatever. Sure, why not? A fair city hall. Police station. Labor market. Backlog. Uh, the sands. Okay. Uh, deputy. Okay, deputy. We're gonna buy this. We're gonna put. Uh. Uh. Bukaki. We're gonna send you again. Barbecue. Yes. Let's see who is. Songs. What song is this? Blues for Mr. T. Uh, no. I think I got. Did I get flagged for that one? Oh, Merc Bow Reach. Alright. Merc Bow Reach. Alright. Now we got Desire Park. Jose Mua reported a runaway to pickpocket at the park. His wallet was stolen with documents and an expensive watch. I'm sure it was that red-headed haired brat. He was rubbing all over me. Oh, can I get your lucky charms and your expensive watch? Where can I get it from you? Oh, lordy lordy. Alright, report. Got him. This is going way too easy right now. Is this like supposed to be a break? Sap. Okay. Got a Sitting quietly on the bench, a red haired guy who fits the description, but in the distance is a woman struggling with a young man in a hood, shouting and clutching her bag. Uh, dude. The guy in the hood, he knows the police tries to escape, he stumbles, and several wallets and pieces of jewelry come tumbling from his pocket. Walk over to the bench at the red hair. <laughs> Let him get away. Damn ginger with no soul is sitting there on the bench. Let's go punch him in the face. Purdy doesn't give no fucks. Purdy takes out the laser, the taser, not the laser. I'm going to fire my laser. Hello, I was contacted by a lawyer named Donald Horton Jr. who told me some wonderful news. Turns out I'm a distant relative of a Nigerian prince who recently died. Ooh. I'm sure you didn't get email not in the 80s. He left me $15 million. I only need 20000 gold bullion to open an account and receive the money, but I noticed that the lawyer carries a pistol, so I decided to play it safe and call a police escort to make sure everything goes smoothly. Yeah. Well. Uh, should I send? All right. We'll send two people over there. I don't know what I'm supposed to do on that one. Public indecency at a bus stop. All right, now these are crimes that are fitting 
of a small city. Emery's clearly beside herself. This jerk took out his crooked dick in the middle of a crowd at bus started and poked me with it. Poked me with the crooked dick. God, it was so disgusting, I screamed and took photos. And several of the men of the bus grabbed the pervert, wrestled him to the ground, and then they had like some big kind of bukkake thing. Well, then I'm going to send bukkake over there. Bukkake, you're like crooked dicks. City Hall had a wall repainted by some hooligans. Police can't do their jobs in a manner. Send these criminals to prison. They spend their shift cleaning off the wall. Kazuma, you failed last time. And Morris, there you go. Alright, what happened here? Oh, eh, okay. What are you gonna do? Public indecency? Did you did you grab his crooked dick? Oh cock you did! Alright. Oh, there we go. That parking lot. Eyewitness saw a man on a pickup truck cruising down a a road stopping every park car, siphoning off the fuel in the spare tanks he carried in back. Went up to him, saw the guy had... Okay. We ain't messing around. Alright. Now, at three, you can take care of that. Uh, what do we got here? Drugstore. Elderly man called the station of rage. I went to the drug... Alright. I went to the drugstore to buy a hearing aid and some pain reliever, and the guy behind the counter tried to sell me cocaine! Cocaine, you say? Cocaine! Alright, now here, here, here it goes. Oh, brother. We're doomed, I tell you. We're doomed. He's been sighted. Squatted down next to the car, one end of the hose in the gas tank. Oh, that's nice. Crooked dick. Uh, the other end of the hose in the suspect's mouth. Yeah, we're just gonna watch him. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Sneak up behind him. Strike a match. Is that you? Ba-boom! Take the hose out of your mouth. Put your hands up. Cookie pulls gun from his rear holster. She's wily and misses us. Uh, you shot us. Oh! Oh! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Our man entered a publishing office to demand a copy of the new novel by writer Ivan Bykoff. I have been bite my dick off, which has just gone to press. Alright, what is this thing that we're not going to be able to do? Alarms coming in from Hell's Hot Wheel Motor Show. Eyewitness report there's a group of attackers broke the window, ran inside, stole six luxury cars. They all drove in the same direction. You should be able to catch them all. Uh, I don't think it's Pokemon, and I don't think we're going to be able to catch any of them. Nope. They got away. Old man has a hearing problem. Pharmacist explained the old man's Vicodin prescription had expired. He mistakenly heard something about cocaine. Well, we wasted four officers on that. Um, yeah. Unicorns of Arcadia Gay Club. Alrighty then. The Unicorns of Arcadia. We're gonna dance the night away. I'm gonna racist speech at a black singer files. Oh. Alright, racist boy. Not having neo Nazis in my my freaking village. Oh, we can't send swap. Man fires a shotgun in the air. Yells at the editor. Better bring me a fucking book right now. You be a hero in tomorrow's obituaries. I don't know if there's a hero. Man shot saving book. 
Oh, by the way, after he shoots you, could we get a copy of the book too? Taser. Who cocky it? She's dealt with crooked dicks all day. Driving under the influence. Well, is it one of our officers? Because that seems like their uh, Marat uh, modus operandi after last episode. At refuse, just take, do what you can. City center, passerby reporter, dark sedan speeding through red light swerving. He's got to be drunk or stoned. Just... Nope, can't. Shit. Did he kill anybody? Yep, he killed somebody. Great. All right, so we got the racist. Didn't I say that uh, we got new frames? Okay. All right, double homicide report, open investigation. Holy crap, okay. I'm button. Tall, middle-aged man was dressed in an unbuttoned gray coat and a white t-shirt. Upon entering the store, he went right for the alcohol, picked up a six-pack of beer, and then headed to the checkout. I was standing right in front of this guy at the checkout. He seemed pretty suspicious to me, and what a nasty smell. I got away from him as fast as I could, and on the way out, I told one of the guards to keep an eye on him. Well, good going, guards. Uh, I was in line with this guy, obviously in a hurry, very nervous. He handed the cashier his credit card, and when the cashier told him the account was empty, he pulled his gun out and shot the poor girl on the head. Oh, Jesus. You know, this game really, really shows the horribleness of humanity sometimes. Just imagine doing that. Just just imagine being a person, just doing your job on the regular, and you just tell the guy, uh, uh, you know, I'm very sorry, but, uh, you know, and then boom, you're dead. That's it. Life is way, way too fragile. So, oh, I'm getting all philosophical on you. I read it in a book. All right. Um, me and my partner Ron were talking. Oh, the guard. Well, the you know, guard paid for it with his life. Me and my partner Ron were talking when a woman came up and said she would watch the strange man at the checkout. Ron went over there, and when I saw a flash heard shots, and this guy was rushing to exit with his beer, I didn't have time to do anything. Didn't have any chance to get my pergola. You are craven. I'm about to go inside, suddenly this idiot jumps out and almost knocks me over. I didn't have time to yell, I just jumped on his bike and left. Alright, surveillance camera. Tall, middle-aged man, on button gray coat and white t-shirt. On button. That's a jean jacket. Is he giving me money? Is this... Oh, well that's not right, because he said he didn't even get his gun out. Okay. I don't know who these are. Smell. Credit card. So none of these are right. Good going, investigators. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, sh wow. Order to work tomorrow. Millsap, get to your ass to work. They're finally declared dead. Holy shit. Holy shit, man. Oh. I don't even care, man. Freeburg mail truck missing mayor rogers displeased with police department nursing home to get cable tv oh my god we're getting cable all right guys this is my last this is my last let's play because i'm gonna get cable tv i can watch skinamax after dark holy sh wow when in rome do as the romans do dude i'm sick of your idiots Goddamn fortune cookie. <sighs> mm.
new. Up all night reading the last called the last temptation of. No. Oh yes, Dixon. All right, we got to start the day here. Oh my God, I don't even want to play music. I'm so distraught. Careless Love, Original Salty. One of these I got flagged for, and I don't remember which. So if you don't hear any music, you know which, which song is. Okay. Got our funeral. He was not an honest servant of the city. I'm glad I killed him. Request denied. Oh, for crying out loud. Labor market. Okay. You are fired. We already had one person die. Mm -mm -mm. She is a pretty young thing. Uh, factory worker Vitaly Samsonov, or the head of the plant. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was a literal plant. Damn you, Fern! Uh, colleagues call the police, but are afraid to intervene because Samsonov is not as strong as an ox. He took us all by surprise. Nancy, you and this dude. No, actually, so you and this dude, and then Robbins and Vasquez. Go. Disorderly conduct. I think this is the one I'm going to get nailed for. About uh, two, two dozen Amish men chased everyone out of the city, dumped, blocked all access. The Amish community claims the land belongs to them. This is where we put our barn and things. That's where I say, don't make... We're going to party like it's 1699. And have the butter and raise the barn. Handwritten document. Uh, hardly any weapons. Um, and now... Uh, Okay, we got to take that out because I think I'm going to get flagged for that. Hold the plant manager over a vat of milk. What a way to die! It does our body good! It does our body good! Manager's crying, kicking his feet. Don't pee in the milk! Children drink that! Hey, it worked! <laughs> I'm sort of torn what to name this episode. Will it be Bukaki and the Crooked Dick? Or will it be, don't pee in the milk, pee children drink that! We're just sending one person out there, man. Dealing with the freaking Amish? Just deal with the Amish! Are they gonna pitchfork your ass? Uh, see numerous calls from visitors at the local zoo saw a drunken zoo employee open the cheetah cage. The dangerous cats are running amok. They're running amok! I'm running a marathon. And I've started to attack people. I was going to say sneak attack. What am I playing, Skyrim? Alright, here we go. Don't harambe! All right. 
Noise complaint. Noise complaint at the cemetery? Caretaker of the cemetery reported strange sounds coming from the crypt. I'm afraid so the dead finally come back. These are dark days. Gosh, I gotta waste the cop on that. Bautier, go there. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Sorely conduct. Okay, we got... We arrested a bunch of Amish. May you go and burn in... Thy burn in hell, heathens! There, we got these guys. I got... I was a little... I had hubris fill my soul. I was a little arrogant when I said, Oh, things are calmed down, and this is just like what a city this size should have. And then all of a sudden, hell broke loose. Lifewire store. Oh, it's, uh... Comp USA! Uh, a man wearing a ski mask entered the Lifewire Consumer Electronics Store. And you guys have no idea what I mean by Comp USA. Uh, pulled out a gun, demanded all the money. Most expensive toaster. Whoa. All right, we got a badass here. Store security guard was fast on his feet, managed to knock the gun out of the robber's hands, but then he grabbed a sales assistant by the crooked dick, and he's starting to strangle her. Oh, well, hey, listen, we don't judge. Zerzi Zimzazu. Uh, unless, it, unless its demands are met. Flagged on YouTube. Okay. We're doing the three, three thing. It's a rustling. Shining flashlight. Two homeless men jump out of the darkness and can of shovel and some jewelry. Seems they don't want to give their plunder so easily. Alright. Yeah, use the taser. When in doubt, use the taser. Okay. So, we just tased a couple of homeless men. Arr, this is my treasure. You'll not be taking it from me today, Long John Silver. Crooked Dick Silver. Man, a ski mask in the middle store holding the girl by her throat and yelling at the employees. Calm down, let go of the girl and just leave. Starts to run. Right. Expand the search of the entire store. There we go. We told him he can leave, and then we lied. Okay. Rubinovich. Rubinovich Casino. Boom! Boom! Blackjack. Boom! 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 Hello, Luca Hugo. This is... Welcome to my casino, where losing your money is my number one priority. Uh, the gang stormed the casino and went straight for the utility room. The eyewitnesses said they heard gunshots. Okay, so now this is serious shit. So Robbins, Gautier, I need my best people. I really don't care. We're sending the force. We're sending the force. We got a, we got a freaking gang heist here. We got Ocean's Eleven going on here. And I would like to put a hole in the George Clooney's ass. I don't care about your accident. Owner of a grocery store, car drove into the sidewalk, knock over a girl playing with her roller skates, the bastard stopped, waited a second, backed out over the child again. Whoa. 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 I feel like a total asshole. And then, I heard that's how the Chinese do it back home. Jesus Christ. But no. That's... Oh, no. A little girl died. A little girl... Oh, please don't let a little girl die. I think a little girl died. Alright. Firefight report. We got him. Ask the Mafia to sell it. Oh no. What corpses? Was I supposed to keep my dead officers? Son of a bitch. I don't know. Alright, come on. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 come on. All right. Kevin's throat bar. Young blonde in short dress approached him at the bar, offered to go to bed with him for cash. I never lay. I never. I have never laid down with a whore, good sir. Can you believe this bitch? How unruly. What a madcap city you have here. For goodness sake. I am with the BBC. Robbins, you seem to. You like some bitches, Robbins? Yeah. Go get Bur Go get him laid, man. Okay. Imprisonment. Man with a strong Spanish accent says a dozen people are being held against their will in the basement of a cafe. It was the mountain. He killed my family. He killed my sister, Ilya. Taiwan Lannister, did you order it? Okay, the hostess of the cafe seeks out needy immigrants, gains their trust, promises mountains of gold, then imprisons them and makes them work around the clock for stale food. Oh, uh, this November she's up for uh, a, the Democratic nomination for uh, the head of the DNC. Oh, 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 someone's going to get triggered on that one. According to the man who called, he was one of the slaves managed to escape. Five armed guards. Shit. Got another call too. I need Randell. All right. Um, I can't bring SWAT. He's got, got four armed guards. Okay. Three new frames. Okay. 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 Surveillance camera. God damn it. No, she was. All right. That. That's not it, cause. No, 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 and no. Uh, me and my partner said we watched the strange man to check out. Saw the flash. Guy was rushing an accident, so shocked me. Didn't get my gun out. I'm about to go inside. Suddenly, this idiot jumps out. I was talking to me right now. Time to yell at me. Jumped on his bike and left. He's got his beer. So, switches, cashier, shot, yeah, she got shot first. Yeah, none of those are close. You investigators fucking suck, man. Okay, new frames. Mole died for this. I was so poor to Mole. All right. I'm colorblind. Oh, that's black. And he doesn't do that. All right. They went up to the second floor. Truck with no plates. That's a truck with no plates. Gun runner. Sand has an eye patch. I have an eye patch. Oh, come on, it's got. That's a pry bar. Crowbar, pry bar. They have to walk up to the second floor. Long green boxes. I don't get it. 
What did I miss? What did I miss? I didn't miss a damn thing. Ah, what did I miss? thrown out a truck. Fuck if I know. Lucifer the sky with Lizard A Club. Okay. Four officers in the nightclub started arresting people for having fun. They bullied the girls. One of the guys got angry. They beat him up and humiliated him. One of them put a gun to the patron's mouth, shot at the others. Another cop knocked out. Okay. I don't think they're real police officers. Well, if they're on my force, they probably are. Alright, I think this should end the day. I doubt it, but we'll see. Prostitution. Oh, wow. Decided to teach her a lip. That bitch. Wow. Frank is such a tool. Such a bro flake. Police find a secret tunnel in the basement, send it very dark, smelly room. Man knows the police shot some police appears inside. Police are taking enemy fire. Oh. Turn fire. Oh, thank God you guys were on hurt. Except Samada. Smirky bastard. All right. Come on, let's just end the day, please. You're going to have to handle it. We got him. Can't take care of it. Why the hell are you a cop? All right, we're going to end the day. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, we're going to end it like this. Mr. Boyd, I am Agent Avrahami, and this is Agent Roberts. You'll have to come with us. Uh, what now? Oh, please get dressed, Mr. Boyd. We'll wait for you in the car. Mr. Boyd, you hear what I said? You know what? You boys can go to hell. I'm not going anywhere. Not right now, at least. You can come down to the police station during regular hours. You can't just come to my house while I'm sleeping, pull me out of bed without any breakfast. Right now, the only place I'm going is back to bed. I'm closing the door now, and if you... <laughs> Jack, what's all this? I told everyone what a great sport you are and how fun it would be to play a little joke on you. Oh, what Jesus Christ. I thought I was going to freaking... Ethan, it's five in the morning. At this hour, the only thing that'll get me laughing is one of you feds slipping on a banana. Oh, they are feds, though. Well, what did I tell you? He's such a joker. Yeah. You're getting old, Ethan. You're that stick up my ass. And you're getting boring. And you're getting fired. Fine. You win. Yeah, but you're still a snappy dresser, Jack. As I'm sure you can guess, we've got an assignment here in Freeburg. Come on, let's go. We'll fill you in at the scene. Oh, and uh, I really am glad to see you, Jack. You have no idea. Why? What a piece of shit. Meet Jack. And this is Agent Suresh, Agent Camaro, Agent Ellis, and Agent Dixon. Jeez, how many men did you bring? Eleven people on my team, plus two heads, but they're still asleep at the hotel. We got to Freeburg a couple hours ago. What is this all about? Uh, actually, 
I was asked not to communicate with the local police, at least until the press conference, but, well, you're a friend. And by the way, you're lucky you didn't have time for breakfast. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, the press are calling him the dentist. Just like every other fucking maniac, he's got his own stupid nickname. We spent 19 years chasing this guy. The M.O. is always the same. He kills young women in a small town, drops out of sight, and then reappears on the other end of the country with a fresh set of victims. He kills without hesitation, stuns the victim, then strangles her while she's unconscious. And that's when things get fun. He uses a power tool to rim out the dead girl's mouth. Jesus. For five years, we've heard nothing. That's the longest break he's ever taken. Then six hours ago, we got a crazy anonymous tip that the dentist was in Freeburg, and he'd already committed his first murder. They even told us the address of the house. It looks like our anonymous tip came from the dentist himself, but that hasn't been verified yet. Oh, uh, Dixon, don't go anywhere. So, Jack, listen. Dixon will take you to the station. You can bring your people up to speed. I'm looking forward to full cooperation, and it would be great if you could bag a criminal like this before you retire. A nice farewell. You know what I'm saying, Jack? Yeah, a nice farewell. And Dixon, Mr. Boyd will tell you where to take him. Come on, look alive. You're the police chief's driver today, if that's good enough for you. Oh, boy. It's what I always wish for in the FBI. Not that piss you normally drink. That stuff gives me wicked heartburn. Yeah, pill water. That's disgusting. Boy, things took a real turn. Chiver, son of a bitch. I think an press is three times a day, but today I ran out of my prescription. Pharmacy said that we're getting more in tomorrow, but I'm afraid the pills... Well, without the pills, I'm not going to be too much good. My mind keeps digging up all kinds of disturbing thoughts. Holy shit, okay. And we got to start the day. Okay, so we got to fucking start the day. Oh, we're running long here, buddies. String quartet... Uno. So thanks for sticking with me if you stuck for me this long. Serial murder. Oh, Sims, welcome to the force. Alright, investigations. Uh, I got three detectives on that. Uh, Beasley. Beasley, Sims. Well, welcome, Sims. What's your name, anyways? Alright. Labor market, we got two. Wait. Personnel. Where's that asshole? He must have died in his sleep or something. I don't see him here. Oh, here he is. All right, Mitchell. Okay. Alright. Let's get this shit over with, shall we? This is a natural area. Beast man found himself stuck in an elevator, but when people attempted to help him out, he lashed out and began to strangle one of them. The third time I'm late to work, and it's all because of this fucking elevator. <laughs> I feel his pain. Frame found serial. Oh no! What a horrible day! First day on the job! Oh shit! 
After the needless death of Detective Sim, this, the guys had a quick word and decided we can't keep on assignments like this without SWAT support. Hello, Jack. I suspect you don't like the dentist nickname any more than I do. But let's just say that's who I am and get down to business. Take a good look at the postcard I sent you. It points to a place where I hid something. Follow the clues. Keep on the trail. Let's just say there's a reason I'm giving you a chance to catch me. But don't dare share this clue with the feds or the trail will go cold. I promise you. And hurry. If you don't figure out the right place in the next 24 hours, I'll destroy all the evidence. Chief, you got yourself into a dangerous game and you can't win without evidence on the dentist. You holding your hand a key to what happened to the victim so the book will see if the image on the card will help you figure out the evidence is hidden. Send your detectors. Don't go blind to guessing. I doubt you have the resources to go all possible places in time. Elderly concierge reports that he saw an angry girl through the window attacking someone's car with a baseball bat, yelling, Get out, you painted wet wretch! Come on, I know you can hear me. I will kill you myself. Ugh, oh, God. Uh, it's a TV again. Alright. Salt. Good going, guys. What's this? Spoiled my attempts to raise the ratings of Justice for All failed and I was let go, but I'm getting ready to launch a new TV project. This time about the harsh everyday life of ordinary police officers. For the pilot episode, I need two cops to ride around for several hours. We'll go around the city with a police car, and you'll get an impressive bonus. Well, oh, Purdy and Morris. I hope they come back, right? You're supposed to come back. Jack, Officer Purdy somehow learned about the postcard from the dentist, and he's up in arms that you've been suppressing evidence. Uh, Purdy's a man? He demanded that I take action immediately, or he's taking this directly to the prosecutor's office. I can send him. We have to do something fast. Oh, no. Open investigation. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that is. Arson. Freeburg Birth Control Union. Three people died in a blaze in Freeburg Birth Control Union Women's Center. Uh, attempted murder. Okay, we got them. Um... Linda Purdy, are you, oh my god, 
we got our first transgender cop. Uh, oh, resume. Okay. Uh, uh, no, resume. Eric Allen. Thank you for the wonderful help. A great series. In fact, we ran out of true stories and had to improvise a little, I think. Someone blurted out something not very nice about the police and about you personally, but don't take it to heart. 10,000. All right. Uh, Oh, I can pay her off. I can pay her off. Okay, nurse. I was about to go home when the building suddenly lost power and it got really quiet. Then I heard a muffled voice like a little clap just from the street the building about 10 employees. I didn't notice the smoke at first. I saw the fire. Some people didn't make it out. Doctor. At the time of the tragedy, I should have already been home. I was just leaving Randy to Ronald Sherman on the street. He's the ex-husband of one of our patients. Decided not to have her child after she consulted with the Freeburg. Birth Control Union. Well, he quarreled with his wife, understood he beat her, and later they divorced. Well, I think I know why she didn't want to have the child with him. But still, but still, sorry, I'm very, I'm very pro-life. I do not believe in that uh, at all. Um, the abortion. Okay, so that's then he's. Well, I, it depends, you know. Uh, but for the most part, no. Uh, since then he's come to our office several times on the evening of fire standing across the road. Yeah. Burning hell, bitch. Okay. Yellow base fire started plastic canister with accelerant. Open a window, fire began. Okay. Uh, three people died because of that. Employee reports a suspicious man came into the bank. He said I was just trying to cash a Ford check cash or something. Hiding some something under his jacket. Uh, maybe we could get rid of the situation by just sending the moron squad with Purdy. All right, Gibson was only away from his vegetable shop for two months. Somebody managed to steal a big cart full of watermelons. I bought that caller a month month ago. Bright orange, she's spot thing weighs about almost 500 pounds, but it got far. All right, two of you guys can handle that. Taking up residence on his farm. Holy jeez, okay. Uh, they claim the house and the surrounding acres belong to them. Lord's given this land for our suffering. Okay, some of the cultists are armed. And we can't send SWAT a lot anymore. The suspect is sitting in the bank. Ready your gun. Jumps up, grabs a woman next to him, putting a huge knife through her throat. He knows the police are there for him. All right, I should have known. Purdy is too good. Even with the idiot squad, she was going to succeed. Elderly couple running a big blue cart filled with fruit that looked like watermelons. Taze them! Taze them both! You criminal element! Hit the man with the nightclub. <laughs> okay. Around the farmer's market, there are three carts. One of them is orange filled with watermelons. Three... Women are carrying something over to a small truck.
And most people are going, oh, I don't know if people like like this episode going an hour, though. I don't know. Maybe you do. Just remember. I have an anxiety attack and my ulcer flares up every time I, I do this game. Alright. Are we done? Are we done with the madness? Please say the madness has ended. Oh, lost power. Okay, so lost power, he went there. And then did that, okay. Alright, three new frames. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, he's got security. Owner. Where's on a big chain? That's a big chain. So this is no. We're going to put that over there. Blindness. Well, they come. Ah, oh, jeez. Drugs. Main entrance or closing time. Yep, there's closing time. Vehicles. Twice a month. Whoa! I got the sequence. Okay. All right. Every three minutes. Okay. Got to send two officers. Uh. All right. Let's see. Double homicide. We got one new frame. Okay, so he grabbed that. Okay, so these are no. That's no. That's definitely a no. That's definitely a no. That's definitely a no. Please say he's there. Please say he's there. It's almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Ah, he's probably not there. Come on, come on, come on. Get this guy. Well, well, well. Son of a bitch. Sims, we gotta declare dead. <sighs> so sorry, Sims. So I went downstairs, figuring I'd find some mercenary or an escaped serial killer or some other low life I'd put away, right? But when I hit the lights, I saw a young kid. Couldn't have been 20. Well, this voice actor is good, too. Dirty. Didn't even have a real weapon, just a rusty shiv. He just stood there, didn't say anything. My whole career, I've been staring down the most dangerous people in the country, and the only one to get into my house and scare my family to death was just some kid about to crap his pants. So I pointed my gun at him, and he just stood there with his mouth open. Bad luck for him. He was pretty lucky to still be alive. 
And you know what? It was you that saved him. I think you have me confused with somebody else, Ethan. No, yeah, no, I would have killed him and sold his bones to that Always guy who wanted dead bodies. Me and Marla joked about how dangerous my job is. We figured that sooner or later someone would sneak into our house and cut us to pieces, yeah? Pretty dark jokes, but innocent enough. And Marla asks me not to jump into gunfights when she kisses me on the cheek before I leave for work. And it's like we figured that if we joke about stuff like that, then it'll never actually happen. But uh, while I trained my gun at the kid's nose, I finally realized someone really can get into our house. Someone really can cut us to pieces. Cut my life Marla into pieces. pieces. This and is my last resort. Marla won't laugh anymore. She'll burst into tears and stay in bed all day crying, hating me more and more every second. So I figured... And the only way out of the situation was to show her that if someone really does dare to break into our house, he's guaranteed to get a bullet in the face. He'll die right there on the living room carpet. God, Ethan, didn't know you were so bloodthirsty. I'm telling you, Jack, I was serious about shooting this kid right there where he stood. I was about to pull the trigger. But then I remembered you. Remembered a... Uh, Thousand years ago, we went to the lake and had some beers after an ethics lecture at the academy. You know, I remember I right after the responsible drinking course. Laszlo, yeah. Remember what he always told us? Being a good policeman is very simple. You just need to keep doing the right thing. I hated those pretentious speeches. I cussed Laszlo up and down and said, If you always do what's right, you've turned yourself into a robot. And you just sat there. Drunk eyes staring into the distance. And you all calm and said, No, Ethan, it's the other way around. To do the right thing takes everything you got as a human. <laughs> I said that. Oh, what an idiot I was. Well, come on, Jack, it's not funny. When things get bad, it's those moments you gotta be hopeful and, and stay human. And I did just like you said. I stayed human. And then I slapped the cuffs on the kid in one quick move, just like Bobby Flash. Bobby Flash? What? You don't remember Evening Freeberg, the old news column? Stories about the cop hero Bobby Flash? Yeah, I heard they even published a book a few years ago. Oh, that Bobby Flash. Yeah, that Bobby Flash. How can you not remember Bobby Flash? We all argued at junior high about which one of us would be Bobby Flash when he grows up. Oh, I'm no Bobby Flash. Hero cop would never think about shooting a terrified teenager. But wait a minute. If I'm not Bobby Flash, then maybe you are. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Yeah, I can run a mile in three days. Are you kidding me? I got him. You ain't no Bobby Flash. You ain't no Bobby Flash. City Hall intern found dead in apartment. What? Allison Bell, victim of brutal murder. Allison Bell? Oh shit, things are getting real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winning lottery numbers are go fuck yourself. Wow, okay, so we got something coming up. Allison Bell was the one that called us, I think. Yeah. What the hell? Wow. What a somber tone to end this episode. But holy jeez, guys. Uh, that's something else. Oh, this one threw me through a shock. This is why I love this game, because it makes me face my humanity. And uh, what would you do? And things aren't always black and white. You can't be sanctimonious. Um, you can just be, just like they said, being good kicks every ounce of human yard. So just remember that when you look at the news and see all that fake news stuff or you see uh, people being violent and the news lies about it or just two extreme sides going at it. Just be good. Just be good. Don't. Okay. Life is complex and you need to have a complex mind to rationalize things. Anyways. That was my little bit of philosophical. And, uh, 
get off my interlawn.